Monday, June 6th, which happens to be the anniversary of D-Day when the American troops went into Normandy to try to end World War II. And I'm here at Pearl and Ike Olshaker, my parents' apartment. And our cousin Margie Solnick has agreed to interview my father about all of his war experiences and who he met along the way and um, whatever he can remember. Okay, so presenting Irving, known as Ike Olshaker. Hello, Ike. Hi, <laughs> Margie. <laughs> Well, you know, I've heard <coughs> some of the stories that you've told me over the years. But when, why don't you start from the beginning? When you were um, drafted, you were sent to uh, Fort Meade, right? You, you, you got to Fort Meade Fort on January, Meade. no, on June 10th, 1944. Yes. Is, is, that, is that in my notes? Yes, it is. Would you like to? The, the, well, just in case. Okay. I need it. And you said you were there only a couple of days? <coughs> there, uh, no more than a couple of days. And, but they did give you a medical exam. They gave me a medical exam. The and only inter <laughs> interesting thing happened was that I had my eyes examined, and the guy who examined them, the, I don't know exactly whether he was a doctor or what his job was, but he looked at him and he says, these glasses are not good for you anymore. He says they don't, they won't work. And he took out a little hammer and he broke the glasses. And he said, "Come in tomorrow morning. We're going to give you a new set of glasses." And I said, "Okay." And I went in the next day. They didn't have my glasses. I think I was there a couple of days, and then he told me, "When you get to your new assignment, they'll have two pair of glasses for you, with metal rims." However, I went down every. Monday, I think it was, for weeks and weeks, and I never got my glasses, and I forgot about them. And Did that was why? that they was the them? end. Never got them. Went down all the time, and they never did give me any glasses. So you went through the whole war without your glasses. Yes. And <laughs> should I How tell the story you now? Of yes, the, can I hop uh -huh. ahead, way way ahead? when we were up in the mountains and uh, I was sitting up there, it was after the weather had changed, so I, we're going to have to go back to the bad weather, but it was after the weather had changed and it was a beautiful day and we were up in the mountains and I was lying down and my friend Norman Panagas was sitting behind the gun where we were sitting in there, looking down into the valley and it was just beautiful and all of a sudden a lieutenant came over who I had never seen before, never saw him again, by the way, came over and he said to Norman, look down there at those guys, shoot them. And Norman said, looks down there, down into the valley. He says, I can't see anybody down there. So he says to Norman, let the other guy sit down there, that's me. So I get behind there, I'm sorry, I can't see anything. So the lieutenant sat down behind the gun and he started shooting. Every third or fourth bullet was a, a you could see, I forgot what it's called, tracer. tracer bullet, and you could see it. And we see these guys running back into the camp, you know, into, into the place where they came out of. And he looks at me and I looked at him, he says, how come you couldn't see that? I said, don't ask me, they broke my glasses. <laughs> But anyway, that was the last, first and last I've seen a, that officer. But uh, now, where was this? Do you remember where? Was no, that all I remember that it was Germany. that it was it, it was spring and it was up in the in the mountains, very high, and we were looking down into this valley. We saw them running back into their house or whatever it was that uh, didn't, didn't cause any problem to us, didn't cause any problem to them. We were only up in the mountains and they came and got us and we went somewhere else. But before that now, before that, can we go back and then... That's good, we'll have yeah. to go all the way back. <laughs> that was just to so, tell you what hap happened with, with my glasses. glasses. I never did get a pair of glasses from the government. So now I could actually remind you of what you've written here. So you were actually in training for like 17 weeks in uh, Fort 
Wheeler in Georgia. In, in Georgia, right? Yes. What was that like? Well, this is we were trained in heavy weapons. That's machine guns and mortars, mm -hmm. and uh, it was long training. You had to learn how to clean and use uh, heavy machine guns and how to shoot mortars. If we were going to go, go into a uh, into heavy into heavy weapons things, so every fourth in, in groups you have A, B, C, D. Uh -huh. D would be heavy weapons. Then they go G, H. The other, all the rest are just uh, infantrymen that shoot with rifles. Rifles, but the, every fourth one was heavy weapons. I, I was in heavy weapons. And actually, I didn't have to shoot mortars at all. All we were heavy weapons was, was uh, machine guns, water-cooled machine guns. That's what Norman and I had. And we had to carry several other guns, I think I listed them over there for you, that we used because when we couldn't carry the guns, the heavy guns, like we had to go somewhere I mean, we'd go on a jeep, go someplace. But if we had to march, we couldn't take the, the heavy uh, weapons oh, with us. And I, th I think the same happened with the people who shot the mortars who were also in our company. In other words, they had uh, rifle. We had, oh, you have to excuse me to get the, to get the words out, for the, uh, the guns that he and I had to carry. Norm and I always had a uh, pistol on our side, mm -hmm. and we also had to carry a semi-automatic. Are they rifles or they? It, it was a, it was a rifle, but it was it was semi-automatic rifle that we carried, which also has another story I'd like to tell about. Yes. At the beginning, when we were starting out, we went, we were taken up uh, north from, I'm having trouble. <laughs> you were already in France. In, hmm? You were already in France at the time. No, no, we didn't get to oh, France. Yes. We, we were in Belgium. Belgium, okay. And we were in Belgium, and uh, we were taken, going to see what was up north, to see whether the Germans had cleared out. Of, uh, of Belgium, and we were marched up this road, and as uh, and when we got near the end of this road, there was trees on both sides, very very heavy, but there was a highway in between them, and then when we got to the end of it, there was a clearing, a big clearing, and when we got to the clearing, we saw act, a lot of activity, and all of a sudden we saw people running towards us and yelling, and that, we didn't know who they were at first. Then we realized the guys were yelling, we're Americans, don't shoot us, don't shoot us. So they came to us finally, and then I said to the guys, where are you guys coming from? Well, wherever we went, we were always first, you know, there was wow. nobody in front of us. I said, where are you guys coming from? He said, well, we were in the, uh, I think it was, 82nd Airborne, and they drop them behind the lines. Oh, well, these guys were very young. They, they, they were our age, you know, like 18, 19 years old. And they would drop behind the lines, and they were coming back. And I got to talking to this guy. It was, it was quite interesting. And, uh, and I asked him, you know, where, you, where were you from? Where, where were you going? And he said, we just had this thing we had to do, and then we go on, and we're going back. <clears throat> and I said, you jumped out of an airplane behind the lines? He says, yeah, that takes a lot of guts, you know, to, to jump behind there. And he was a very nice young man he was talking to, and he was carrying a carbine. Did I say that? I, that's what I had to carry? That's the oh, word God. I couldn't think of? There was, he had a carbine there. And I looked at it, and I said, I carry a carbine when when I have to march. I said, but mine has a wooden stock on it, and yours has a folding stock. He says, these are made separate, special for us, because to be light when we jump out of the airplanes. 
So I said, boy, that's beautiful. He says, take it. I says, I don't want to take it. I don't want to take your gun. He says, yeah, he says, take it. He says, it's a good, you know, it's, it's a folding stock. It's very easy to carry. I said, well, I have a carbine. He says, yours is heavier. It's got a wooden stock. He says, throw it away. I said, throw it away? He says, yeah, when I jump, I usually lose most of my stuff anyway. He says, here, take mine. It's for me. I said, thank you. So he gave it to me, and I threw away my gun, and for the rest of the war, I carried a, a carbine with a folding stock, which was much lighter than my friend uh, Norman had to carry. He had to carry a heavy one. <laughs> It's the only one I've ever seen over there, and that was for me for the rest of the war. So you were very lucky. I was lucky yes. to get it. That, that was very helpful in the long run. Now, do you remember going over there at first is to Scotland when your boat, Queen Mary, took you from New York? Yes, Scotland. Scotland. And then got off. We got on a train, train. took us all the way to the south, oh, I see. to uh, what is it, the harbor or something. <coughs> Someplace there, and we got on the boat. Terror. They they fed people. They didn't feed me. Because no. I, yeah. How was that situation? Can you talk about it? What? The, the, the food. Well, the, the food there but that they had. The boat that took us across did nothing but except take American troops across the thing. I went down there, and we all sat down in this big place, and I looked at the chunk that they gave you, this bowl, I walked out. Oh. So I just waited till we got over to the other side and we got off the boat, put us on trains and took us up into, into uh, Belgium. Belgium? Uh, Belgium. So you didn't eat on the boat, you mean? I didn't eat a thing. It, it was it looked like slop to me. Oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't understand how they were eating it. So uh, I waited till I got up. In Belgium, got something to eat. And in Belgium, you stayed there. How long do you remember? Because there was a family that sort of. No, in Belgium, when I first got there, I wasn't with my company yet. Uh -huh. But uh, they fed us that night and gave us blankets and things. It was extremely cold, the coldest night I've ever experienced. And in the morning, there was we saw the lights down here where they were cooking you know, the food, and everybody jumped up and ran down there, and we sat there, they gave us eggs and food. Then they gave us, they also gave us papers where we should go next, and how to go, and, and uh, the next day we left, and we walked towards where they told us to go, and that's where I joined my outfit the first time. Oh, for the first time. Uh so you went by truck, in other words, the army transport, right? You didn't march there. You didn't. You didn't they, go. I, I, I really forget how I got far. to the place. I remember walking a, dis a good distance, and I remember seeing my friend Norman walking. He was yeah. walking at a different angle than me, but we were both walking towards the same place. And uh, when we got there, and uh, well, unfortunately for both of us, we look kind of alike. If you, you look, look at the, if you see the pictures in the back, yes. on the table, we look we look somewhat alike. And, so you became uh, friends then. But well, I had met him before, and his daughter wrote that uh, Norman mentioned meeting me in uh, in, in, in the South United Carolina. States, in South Carolina, in Columbia. So That's right. How how. You must be very hungry when you got to Belgium, because you didn't. You said you didn't eat on the boat. Um, on, oh, on the boat, I, for, I forget. On the boat was one thing. This was on the train coming down. Yeah. There, I didn't eat anything, and I didn't eat anything on the on the uh, boat going across. I, I'm talking about the. the yes. I, I ate on the uh, Queen Elizabeth, on the oh. Elizabeth, but but on the boat going across, I didn't eat. I see. How was the food in general throughout the whole time? You, you had some trouble with I food. Didn't, I food hardly ate anything there's anyway. There's no kosher food there. No, I, I the hardly time, ate anything. There was anything. no kosher ration either. No. Right? So how did you manage? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I was you very to, thin. Did you, did you I didn't to weigh anything. People, trade food? Huh? You had to trade. I, yeah, well, when, we, when there was food around, you know, when you had to stand in lines where there was food, people used to get behind me because sometimes there was steak and things like that, and they would trade me like a piece of pineapple for a, a steak or something like that. Uh -huh. But that, that was in, the, in training camp, too, in the United States. They used to get behind me so they would be able, oh. when they had good stuff, they, they, they would get steaks and stuff. I see. Yeah. Right here, yeah. Okay. Your uncle, am I, can you hear me? Um, your uncle's a rabbi, and he told you you didn't have to keep kosher when you went over there, didn't he? He told me I didn't have to keep kosher but not to eat anything from a pig. Okay, so but, but you, you could, could eat, but you could eat, other things, but, but you not, could eat meat. Right, you, you don't, you wouldn't eat pork. Right, you shouldn't but, eat pork, but you, but could, you eat could eat, you could eat from a steak, meat. yeah, a steak yeah, like from, a, from but yeah, from a cow or something like uh -huh. that. So did you do that? Well, I didn't do it, and one time when I finally, actually, it was the first. Actually, it was the first day. Uh, can we take a break? Now? Do you think? 